So the eucalyptus are definitely a crowd's favourite in the recent years as more and more people realise that there is more than just rose leaves that one can do. So the way this leaf grows is really unique and uncommon. I'm going to show you guys a really fast, free and efficient way to be making these leaves so you don't have to spend the entire day just churning out leaves after leaves. This is also a really good fundamental and universal technique to have under your belt. So once you've mastered this technique, you can go ahead and apply this technique onto other leaves as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So in this video, we'll be making our eucalyptus leaves. This is how they look like. So we're gonna start off with our 20 gauge wire. This is how a wire looks like before cutting. So you can go ahead and trim them into threes um, or just halves, depending on how long you want your eucalyptus branch to be. So I'm just gonna start with something small. So I'm gonna eyeball and trim them into threes. This is a 20 gauge wire and I think it's really great for us to just show the thick um, branch of the eucalyptus. So I'm going to set these two aside and I'm just going to work with one. So for the colours, we'll be using the Wilton colour Juniper Green, Navy from Sugar Flare, and also Cream colour from Sugar Flare. We're going to... So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the green colour. Onto my palette. We're looking at a lot of gel colours because this is a really, really strong um, green tone leaf. Back. And I'm going to pull out some of my navy as well. So I'm going to put my navy in the second well. And lastly, I'm going to bring in some of my cream colours. So for eucalyptus, the kind of green that we're looking for today is kind of like a bluish green. So that's the reason why we have our navy. So we'll probably be mixing two kinds of green. So the first green that we'll be mixing will be a mixture between the uh, juniper green and the navy blue. And the second green that we'll be mixing will be uh, the juniper green and the cream tone over here. So we're going to start mixing these two tones together first. And remember when you're always mixing a new colour, um, use a new well next to it and not where the original colours are because then you can always go back and grab the original colours if you don't have enough of any of them. So I'm going to start here. So just on vodka on the, in the well. And then I'm going to get some of the green. And then I'm going to mix it up. So if you're unsure if this colour works, you can always uh, swatch your colours first. So I'm going to do that for my first green. Okay, so this looks like a really nice deep green, but I'll probably be looking at something lighter than that. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit more. So let me test it out. Okay, so I think this green is a lot better than the first one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of my blue tones, which is on navy. And I'm going to add into this well. And just give it a good mix. Okay, so you can see the green has definitely changed a bit, but the blue tones are not really obvious in this green. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more the navy since we are looking for something pretty dark. Wow. So you can see this green is definitely more bluish as compared to the first green that you have. But it's definitely a lot darker than what I'm looking at. So in order to dilute this one without kind of like destroying what we have over here, you can go ahead and grab some of this and bring it into a new well. Just a tiny bit of it and then you can go ahead and add your vodka in this well over here. So you can definitely see a lighter colour and it's clo a lot closer to what we're going for already. So probably just a little bit more. Mm, and I think I'm good. So I'm pretty happy with this green. So now I'm going to move on to mixing my uh, next green. 
So the next green will be uh, the juniper green and the cream tone. So I can go ahead and take some of this green, put it here. Some of the cream tones. So I'm going back and forth, just taking some of my greens and then some of my cream tones just to see where I get. So I love that this cream is giving me some sort of like a mossy green look and it acts like a really nice kind of highlight on our eucalyptus as well. So I'm going to play with it here. Okay, I should swatch here so you guys can see the difference. So this is a more bluish green and this is definitely something that is a lot warmer. So I'm, I think I'm happy with it. I'm just going to mix a little bit more. And then I'm going to work with it. Okay, this looks good. So what you can do is you can always also go ahead and add a little bit of the navy blue green into here just to kind of like balance it out and bring them closer to one another. Great, so I'm pretty happy with my green. So I'll be using this green and this green over here to create our eucalyptus uh, leaves. So I'm going to set this aside. And for this method, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring in um, just random strips of uh, wafer paper and we're just going to color the entire thing before we cut out all these different leaves. So the good thing about this uh, method that we're using is that we do not need any uh, cutters. So we're just going to freehand cut out um, any leaves that we want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and just so make sure that your work surface doesn't have any um, liquid uh, or additional liquid that you do not want for your wafer paper. So clean that up and then we're ready to start. So this is what I would consider a pretty big piece of wafer paper. So I'm going to switch it up to uh, my big brush. So with my big brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into all the different greens and I'm just going to paint over so that I get different shades of green on this piece of wafer paper as well. So I'm going to start with this. And remember when you paint, just go from outside to outside. From my outer area. And just brush it across. Okay, so this feels like a pretty light green, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of this to here and create a darker green. So you can always switch around as you're working on it. Also, this green looks a lot better, so I'm going to go with this and a warmer green. So what this does is that it makes the entire wafer paper look really, really soft because of the amount of liquid that we're adding into the wafer paper. So I have a really quick uh, tip for all of us. So I'm going to get like a, a bag of cornstarch and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently tap on the wafer paper that we have. You can flip it around. So what that does is it helps to dry out the wafer paper just by a little bit so it's easier for us to work with. At the same time, eucalyptus has this very nice texture, so by adding this cornstarch um, look to it, it actually brings it more to life. So this looks great. So don't worry about the extra cornstarch. If we have too much, we can always dust it off later. So I just want to quickly remove the colors on my work surface. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for it for a while to dry. Probably just give it like 30 to 45 seconds. And you can just tap off the extra cornstarch. So what we'll be doing with this piece later on is we'll be folding them into halves. You can fold them into quarters too if you want. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get our scissors and we're going to trim all these different shapes of um, leaves that we have on our eucalyptus over here. You can always test to know when they're, if they're ready by just folding them into half. And maybe just another half to see if they're sticking. So if you open up and they're not sticking, that's great because that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now we are ready to trim them into different shapes. So I've decided to just fold them into half so that I can explore different shapes over here. 
So I don't have a cutter, but I'm just going to base on memory. If you need it, you can always just Google a photo of a eucalyptus and then um, use the shape as a reference over there to cut your leaves. So I just going to... So it doesn't have to be a perfect cut for the first time. You can always go back in and you can trim it into any shape that you want. So once they're ready, go ahead and pull them away from each other to make sure they're not sticking. So those are the two shapes. So if you fold this into quarters, then you'll be getting four pieces of this. But I'm just going to go uh, with half so that I have different um, sizes to play with. So you can have like a smaller one. You can trim them into a sharper edge. And maybe the last one I'll go with. Oh, I'm gonna split them up. And the last one I'll probably go with something bigger. somewhere in between these guys so these are just extras that you can just toss them away okay so now what we're gonna do is these guys are pretty flat uh, eucalyptus can be flat uh, but some of the petals or the leaf petals can be um, kind of like folded like that so, so now what we're gonna do next is learn how to create this foam over here. So I'm going to bring in our foam pad and we can leave the petals on our foam pad so it's a lot easier to work with. So in order to get some impression and shapes on our um, eucalyptus, what I'm going to do is with our Dresden tool, what I'll do most of the time is just run the fatter side of the Dresden tool along the edges and just allow the edges to kind of like cup inwards. So very, very minimal movement is needed. So you can always flip it around and do the same as well. Or you can just use your hand to kind of like bend the leaf this way and just let it sit this way. You can also go down to the tip where the sharper end is and just do some impressions on it. So every different um, leaf um, of the eucalyptus, like the movement itself is done really randomly. Because you wouldn't know how it looks like on the leaf uh, or on the branch. So you can only just kind of like play around and add some movements to it. So we're going to run our dress down to along the edges. And you can also just kind of use your hands to bend the leaf. Or if you do not trust yourself, you can always get a skewer. And then what you do is place the skewer, uh, place the leaf between the skewer and your finger, and just tore it down this way for you to get a very natural curl on the leaf. Okay, so now we're ready to attach our leaf onto our 20 gauge wire over here. So before I get started, I always like to just bend my wire a little bit so that it looks more natural and it's not uh, fully straightened out. So this is a really simple step. What you have to do is just dip your brush into the um, edible glue, tap off the excess, and bring the branch out. And we'll probably start with a smaller leaf. So we're just gonna coat the leaf with a little bit of the egg white glue. Just a tiny sheen of edible glue is enough. And then immediately you're gonna place your wire on it and just press it down. So just give it a few seconds and it should stick immediately. And there you go. So this is one leaf done. So we're going to go ahead and um, add all the other leaves that we have. So at random positions, we'll probably do one over here. You can always bend it outwards as you're sticking as well. So hold it there. That's our second leaf. 
and then we're gonna keep going. So I like to give um, the leaves a good distance between each other. So I'm probably going to attach the next one a little bit further away from the two of them. So maybe somewhere around here. So if you decided to attach two leaves opposite each other, you can just go ahead and add a little bit more wafer paper glue here. And you can go ahead and stick them together like that. There you go. So if you want just a little bit of variation and you do not want to have equal distances between all the little petals of the leaves, you can go really high up for this one over here and bend it down and then the last one we can probably go around here at the bottom this way so it looks more natural as well so I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to here and I'm gonna stick a lot closer to this guy so when you're attaching these leaves on a branch remember to always look at your branch uh, from all directions so not just from one angle you want to always consider different angles because you will never know how someone is looking at your cake design. So I always like to kind of like twirl around and see what's happening on, from all angles. And then the last leaf, I'll probably place it a lot lower to give it some variation. So depending on how you like your leaf to be folded, you can try your different angles. So I prefer it to be curling out this way. So I'll probably go with that. Maybe in this direction. I'm gonna hold it there. Okay. And there you go. So this is done. So you can go ahead and do more. And once you are done, this should be. Uh, this is what you will have. So here are all the different eucalyptus branches that I've done. So if you're aiming for something that's longer, you can go ahead and cut your wires into half and this is what you should get. If you're aiming for something shorter, you can do like what I did. So I went ahead to trim it into threes and this is what I get. So you can see how I vary all the distances between my eucalyptus so they all look really natural. And from every angle, they look presentable as well. So that's one thing you want to always take note of. Now that we're done with our leaves or our eucalyptus, you realize that we are using a white wire over here. And, and the reason why I do that is so that I can dust it into the colors that I want. So you can go ahead and dust them into a green tone or like a reddish green tone. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. So the colors that we'll be using will be cinnamon, very dark chocolate, and forest. So what I'm gonna do is gonna pull out the colors from each of the little bottles that I have over here. So I'm looking at something um, closer to a darker green. So I'm going to pull out some of my greens and I'm going to add some very dark chocolate into it. So I want something that's really close to my branch but of a more um, brownish chocolatey green tone. So with that, I'm just going to go into the branch and I'm going to start dusting them. So go ahead and add some of the cinnamon as well and you can change the color as you go up the branch so that way the white wire wouldn't look so stuck on your eucalyptus and it will look a lot more natural as well so i'm gonna do one more So if some of the dust colors goes onto the leaves of your eucalyptus, that's perfectly fine because the, the colors do complement, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. 
So these are the eucalyptus leaves that we have done. From here, you can see that we have different shapes and sizes and also the lengths between the leaves are really varied as well. So this is one thing to take note of when you're making leaves. Always make sure that the distances between the leaves are varied. So when it comes to cake decorating, you always have more options to play around with. So have fun with it.